Hey, Damian Mason coming at you with Kelly Garrett, one of Extreme Ag's founding fathers, talking about his objective for 2024. We're recording this at Christmas time of 2023. Two years ago, I was in this very office here at Garrett Land and Cattle, and it was very um, eye opening. And also, it set a theme for the year 2022. He said, Damien, I am going to concentrate on stress mitigation. I believe we have never actually seen a stress-free crop. Everything that I do in 2022 is going to have an overriding theme of, can we reduce stress on the crop? And it was really neat because it gave us a chance to bop back to that throughout various times of the season. Like, what are you seeing about using products and practices to reduce stress? And, and it's really was fascinating uh, the way we looked, you know, took a, this on. And we even, I encourage you to go back and look at it. Matt Miles talked at one point in one of our webinars, everything we really do as producers is to reduce stress. So you can imagine I'm sitting here with Kelly and I said, why don't you tell me what you're going to do in 2024? What's your overriding theme in 2024? And you said, I'm going to work on a ballast plant. And that's going to be an overriding theme of everything we do. Are we keeping our plants balanced? What's that mean? We have validated or verified how much nitrogen our soil is releasing, and that mineralized organic nitrogen on top of the synthetic nitrogen we have puts our plants out of balance, and, the, and that nitrogen becomes extra vegetation. i got to make sure I'm explaining this in the right way. The nitrogen becomes extra vegetation, and this gets into your sustainability a little bit, where they talk about we're over-applying <clears throat> nitrogen. We are, but that is an incomplete statement. We are over applying nitrogen relative to the amount of micros or other nutrients that go on. This is oversimplifying the action a little bit, but what the plant does with nitrogen is it turns it into a protein. How does it do that? The plant takes micronutrients and produces amino acids. The amino acids convert to nitrogen to protein. With the amount of nitrogen we have, we don't have enough amino acids to convert it all. So it becomes unassimilated. Yep. And in an extreme case, it even turns to disease such as white mold. White mold loves to feed off excess nitrogen. When the sun comes out and our soybeans get tall and rank and they're six inches in between the nodes instead of an inch and a half or two, that excess vegetation there, mm -hmm. that excess uh, uh, distance in the nodes, that's excess nitrogen. The plant is trying to dilute itself to go into reproduction. So it's storing this nitrogen in other places to try to come into balance for reproduction. And then when we're like, you know, playing on our 2022 theme of uh, stress mitigation, every excess nitrate molecule takes three water molecules to service it. Think about that in a drought type setting like we had in 23. All right, now I wanna go, I, I got about three questions. That's a big one right there. So the big one right there is water. We'll just go ahead and take that one first because that's where we just came to. <clears throat> First off, I had no idea. Uh, so having more nitrogen than is necessary in the soil? In the soil, and then, the, you know, the plant takes up what we would call luxury consumption, but the, you know... Not this, really necessary not to, really produce necessary. This, yes. to produce the crop. It's purely a vegetative response. It's not a yield response. It's there, and so it takes up more than it needs, which we never would have even thought such a thing. And then once it's uh, assimilated that, then also the water demand for the plant is increased. Yes, yeah. because of excess vegetation, yeah. a bigger plant, to a bigger, bushier plant, which we all think is good, and that's great if it translates to yield, but if it doesn't translate to yield, uh -huh. then we've just created a lot of vegetative growth we've and created a lot of need for water. Yeah, and then you're going to say, oh, well, this crop didn't, didn't uh, materialize because we didn't get the rains. Well, maybe it also could have materialized better, but because it used a bunch of water unnecessarily to produce vegetative growth versus reproductive growth. Is that what I'm hearing? That's right. This is a, the, uh, an agronomist that we worked with out of Idaho. We've become good friends. He made a very profound statement to me. American agriculture does a great job of producing a very sexy looking vegetative crop. I want to produce a reproductive crop. And all of that excess nitrogen produces vegetation. And is provided that vegetation translates to yield, that's great. I'm telling you at this point, it does not. Is it a agronomic thing or a practices thing or a combination of both to balance the plant? It's a combination of both because it's, there's agronomic things we need to apply at reproductive and we need to use the practices to do that. Those practices would be, you know, an airplane, a helicopter in my situation, you know, Temple or Chad, uh, they could use a Heggy spray or a highway right. sprayer, right. things like that. What about then uh, from an agronomic thing, you said you use nitrogen as an example. Let's just go back to nitrogen. Um, 
is that just a is it as simple as not over applying because we've generally over applied nitrogen because it was easy um it was generally cheap it was kind of like insurance like hey you know what we're probably putting on more nitrogen than we actually need but what the hell is cheap and we'll make sure that we don't have you know that's not going to be the reason that we fail this year or the last couple of years we've actually turned the nitrogen down when we validated what came what has come out of the soil and we even had a hypothesis that we could never achieve balance and balance to us is 95 percent nitrogen assimilation in the plant and we can measure that through the sap testing that we do Okay, but that still doesn't take, you're not getting 95% of your nitrogen applied assimilated, I'm guessing, because isn't it 35 or 40% of nitrogen actually what we end up with? We are assimilating 95% of the nitrogen in the plant. Okay. That's what we're measuring. We measure in the soil what's available. Yeah. And at the same time, we're taking a sap test and we're measuring what is being assimilated in the plant. Ballast plant means... There's somebody that's still saying, I'm, I'm not sure what a ballast plant is. So kind of go go elementary here on a ballast plant and, and to, to, to you. To the, the ballast plant to me is when we, you know, you divide the amount of nitrogen in the plant by the total N in the plant and it, uh, what is being used. And there's two different nitrogen numbers that we get out of the SAT test. One will tell you what's used. One will tell you what's unused. We want to be above, our goal is to be above 95% used or the term is assimilation. We want to be above 95% assimilation. You, That's balance. You've used the word ballast a lot, and I, I like it because you've introduced me to the ballast. You said a couple of years ago um, when we were in a recording, you said, I don't think there's mined soils. I don't think there's depleted soils. You know, the old thing, well, they came in and paid a bunch of cash rent, but they just mined the hell out of that soil for three years. You say, I'm not sure that's as real as imbalanced soils. It's kind of the same thing with the plant. Yes. I, in our area, now you go to other areas that don't, that aren't blessed with the soil we have in Iowa, that m statement not might be as true as it is here. But the statement here, the amount of fertility and the amount of potential in the soil is far greater than we realize. Yeah. And when something has been mined here, that's not true. It's out of balance. Yeah. We're not using up all the nutrition in the soil. We have just screwed up the balance of the soil. So it becomes unavailable. Well, it might be true that some operator came in, overpaid for cash rent, didn't this, it abused it for three years. That that does happen. Yes. It, but you don't think it's a matter of mining. You think it's probably letting it get out of whack. What will you do to make sure that the plant doesn't get out of whack? What What is it that you think, you know, from a practice standpoint, I'm still wondering, manage moisture as best you can on your irrigated ground. What else can you do to keep the plant balanced? So this year we were taking the sap tests, and at V10, we were down to 85% assimilation. You know, at that time, V10, you're getting, you know, into those mid to later summer months, yep. and the the microbial system is really, weather's warm, microbial system in the soil is really cranking up, really releasing a lot of those organic nutrients, specifically in, specifically nitrogen, and the plant got out of assimilation. At V10, Vern was taking those, Evan's reading the data, we were at 85%. At that time, at V10, we chose and we ended up spending about $140,000. And, you know, there was, so this was a, a bit of a big gamble because this was the first time we had done it, but we really believed in what we were looking at. We, at V10, we flew the plane, spent the money and applied a micronutrient nutrient package to try to supply the micronutrients that the plant was lacking relative to the amount of nitrogen. And then a week, a week or two later, we're out there taking our next set of sap samples. And we were at 96% assimilation. We did balance the plant. Okay. All right. Can a person tell what a plant looks like balance-wise uh, for appearance? No. Not until it's too late. Not until it's too late. The, yeah. the plant health that we achieved this year was second to none yeah. that we have. And our, our crops stayed greener longer in the, because the plant was healthier, just like a healthy person. Is ballast plant, is ballast plant as an objective then... Is it is the only payoff yield or is there something? Obviously, we always think yield. If a plant is balanced, it's going to, I'm thinking the benefits are yield, mm -hmm. better utilization of resources so I can maybe use less. Yes, the efficiency is better. Yeah. You know, so from, I'm not, from I'm not getting, like a water perspective. Or I might put the same amount of fertility or the same amount of mag micros out, but I'm actually getting my bang for it. You're reaching your potential. Yeah. So you're not, yes. we're not wasting. So yield efficiency uh, or maximization. You know, a lot of times in ag, we would say efficiency. I'm starting to use the word maximization. Maximization of the fertility input is really what we're talking about because yes. efficiency is it gets convoluted. It's maximizing the input. 
Yes, that's true. The yield maximization of the resources. Is there anything else? Is there a benefit down the road to a balanced plant? I think that the disease pressure in the field can go away mm-hmm. because the disease is gone because of the immunity of the plant. So yeah, a healthy plant then doesn't get the disease, then the disease won't carry over to the next year. The next right. year. It's not, it, 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 over time, I believe it will become less prevalent in the soil. That's smart. That's a smart adjustment there. I hadn't thought about. So yes, we might we might decrease the the decrease the veracity or longevity of a disease pressure problem. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Uh, you know, then it the end goal is it will manifest manifest itself in yield because we will reach the potential. Are we going to because of balancing the plant then realize? And I think we've done this a lot already that we we're over applying this, we we're over applying that, and then a couple of years later you're like, man. We're getting by with eighty percent of what we used to put on, or you know, your your rate per yield is going to keep going down. Is that something that you think a year from now we'll be talking about? Yes, because again, you know, the overriding theme uh, in the public eye is that we're over applying nitrogen. Well, you could just as easily say we're under applying my nitrogen, but. But that, now let's take that a step further. That doesn't mean I want to apply more micronutrients and I want to turn up the anhydrous. Right. Because all of that front loading, again, just leads to vegetation. There's a few products that we're going to play with and use and research in 24 to spike the plant even higher from a nitrogen level. But we're talking about uh, applying a gallon or two of things from a foliar perspective to spike the nitrogen level. So in 23, we did achieve balance. We feel like the crop reached its potential, and to put a to put a metric to it, uh, we were at approximately thirteen hundred parts per million of nitrogen with ninety six percent assimilation. And upon ear set, seventy five percent of our plants had two ears. Very excited, okay? But they aborted. <laughs> well, you know, we talked about was it heat and you know the environmental things like that, and we don't know, but I believe that. To allow this plant to flex beyond what we ever thought was possible, we need to achieve balance, but we need to achieve balance at a higher level. So there's a few products that we're researching that we will apply with the plane, B10, R1, R5, to try to elevate that nitrogen level in the plant. And again, we're not talking about, you know, like for the sustainability folks watching, we're not talking about pounds and pounds of nitrogen. We're talking about a a gallon or two of, of stuff here or there. So we want to spike that nitrogen level at the reproductive phases, yeah. and we want to a- apply, we want to supply the corresponding micronutrients. And and like I said, we were at a 1,300 parts per million level. I want to have 95% of assimilation at, say, a 2,000 parts per million level. And then I want to see, can I hold both ears? And what is the corresponding yield that happens at that point? All right. We, everything you talked about so far is corn. And the person listening is like, okay, that's great. You're Iowa, you're corn. I'm a, a rice producer. I keep up because I'm down here with Matt Miles in, in Arkansas, whatever. Balanced plant balance, balanced plant. This will work across all crops. I, you know, like corn is the one that I work on. This will work in my soybeans. This will work in my winter wheat. This will work in in Matt's cotton and rice. But I can't give you the corresponding. Well, you're using nit- you're using nitrogen and assimilation for the corn example. It'd be difficult to go through every crop grown in North America. But just going over to soybeans, what's the one there that's out of, that's not balanced? It's it's still nitrogen. Is the it? plants aren't that much different. The, the, in my situation, yeah. nitrogen is out of balance. Right. It's What's interesting is Temple in the Chesapeake Bay region, when we have talked about this, he's supplying a lot more micronutrients than most of the rest of us. But it's because it's because of the Chesapeake Bay watershed requirements or yeah. regulations he's at. Temple was already doing a lot of these things without knowing he was doing it. what a, The thing is, is then people are going to say, well, is this as simple as just putting out more micronutrients? Well, maybe, but not quite. It needs to be put out at the right time. Yeah. And you need to use, you know, I believe you need to use the SAP testing to make good qualified decisions. Does this play into the whole idea we've talked about before at Extreme Ag about spoon feeding? And in other words, the idea of, uh, yes, you know, what, what's Matt Miles say? He used to did it wrong. He's like, I can't put a buffet out there at uh, in March and expect it to still have uh, nutrition for those plants come September. We need to, you know, like in our situation, in our situation, we put applied micronutrients yep. this last year, yep. V10, R1, and R5, which is that spoon feeding approach 
because Mother Nature at that point, again, the microbial system, the warm weather, she's really cranking out more and more nitrogen, yeah. and we need to keep up with that release. We can't just put out a whole bunch of V10 and right. expect it to last. So monitoring plant balance is going to be a matter of tissue sampling, a matter of sap sampling, yeah. and tissue sampling, not so much. Not so much. The, the data isn't exact enough for us to be right. able to be predictive. Will you know when the combine runs if you accomplished your goal or you know before then? We will know before. We'll know before. You know, like this year, we had two ears on 75% of the plants and there's always this- But they didn't make it. But they didn't make it. And there's always this argument, do we even want the plant to supply two ears because they abort a lot of the time? Well, I believe now that they abort because we don't maintain a high enough fertility level. Mm -hmm. And so we need, you know, like this year, I was so excited because we achieved a simulation, which we didn't even know was possible. Well, now I want to achieve assimilation at a higher level. Then I believe- A higher level, a higher level means also later season. Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe slash hope that then I can maintain that second year. It was a major accomplishment for me in these hills to just put two ears on all of that. Yeah. And we used to think two ears were bad, but like you said, it's because we, we weren't able to get the energy to the second ear. So therefore it became like, this is, this is sapping. Yes. Two ears is bad because we've never held it. So we felt like it was a waste of energy, waste of time, what we were producing. What if we can find a way to, to hold it, if we maintain it. And I believe it's possible based on what I've seen this year. Balanced plants, the overriding theme of Garrett Land and Cattle for 2024 Next time we check in with you, what's the question I'm going to ask for? What are you going to show me in the field? And then uh, what do I need to know about? I, I hope that uh, I hope that come August, I'm showing you two ears on a lot of plants because we've maintained it. Yep. A balanced plant means better plant health, means less stress, yep. and the uh, end result is means higher yield. Got it. What's your objective for 2024? This is the time of year to be thinking about it. Is there a chance that you can, uh, you know, up your game by focusing on one overriding theme like you did, stress mitigation, and, and a couple of years ago was an overriding theme, kept coming back to it. It changed your product mix. It changed how you looked at things. And this is maybe going to be the same thing. It's going to change how you think about your cropping system. That's right. We're relearning everything. I just say, you want to make small changes, change what you do. You want to make big changes, change how you look at things and how you think about things. He's Kelly Garrett. I'm Damian Mason. Thanks for being here. Until next time, Extreme Ice Cutting the Curve.